What's up, everybody? I am back here with my dear friend Ryan Haley, and today we're going to talk about some freaking movies. We're going to talk about some freaking cinema. How's it going, Show Ryan? Show me the Marty! <laughs> Great one. Um, so basically, I was fortunate enough to... Uh, here in my life in Helsinki, I basically live at the Kino Regina movie theater, which is part of the Helsinki library. Okay. Tickets are super cheap, seven euros, and they do... Honestly, their programming is so good. It's a retro theater. It's part of the Helsinki library system. And this summer, they did the Martin Scorsese retrospective. They showed oh, yeah. 15, no, they showed 17 of his narrative movies. They didn't show everything, but they showed 17. 17 out of 25, I believe. I counted today. Okay, yeah. So they showed 17 of them. They also showed his documentaries, but I didn't go to those. And I went to 14 of them. I missed wow. three of them. But we're going to go over, we're going to focus on the ones that I saw because it was just really awesome. A lot of these were made before I was born or when I was a little kid. So getting to see a lot of these movies on the big screen for the first time was awesome. So the way that we're going to do this is uh, we are going to, I'm going to bring up a movie. Ryan, uh, you tell me what you think of this movie. Tell me, about, tell me about the last time that you saw it and what your general opinion about the movie is. And then, uh, and then guess what I think of it. At okay. least, or what my more what my experience is, and then we'll rank it together, or I'll just, <laughs> or I'll just like pull a stall in and just say, oh no, it's my opinion that matters. All right. Well, n n now I, I have one question because you know usually yeah. on a tier list, right? Like like S is the Untouchables, A is you know pretty great, like a uh, uh, solid and whatever, so on and so forth, but. Uh, is there? Are we grading on a curve because Scorsese's are so awesome? I mean, I feel like there's going to be very, question. very few in the F or D or C or whatever. I mean, this is just going to be a big S A B list. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, so, well, how would you like to do it? Because I, you, now that you brought this up, I hadn't thought about it. Well, um, I I don't know. The bo both seem a little weird because either there's one way where they're, we're going to have them all on essentially three, maybe four rows, um, and then the other way is a little weird because you know if you're comparing a, your average person's F to a Scorsese F, I mean, I think maybe the curve I is probably take the better out, way to I do can it. just take out the D and F rows. <laughs> well, I, I think mean, we should keep them there just to, okay. so, to see them, but. All right, All right, so so we're gonna do it normal, like what, like I, like S tier. I would movies say normal. I mean, so when we've done tier lists in the, the past, curve. yeah, and then when we've done it in the past, I think we should still maintain the same standard where S is absolute untouchable masterpiece, A is great, B is good, C is didn't really like, D is hard, did not like, and F is hate. Well, so C, did you say C is didn't really like? Because wouldn't C just kind of be? So so, like kind of maybe like sure, some okay. stuff. Okay, so then let's just say C is so so, D is didn't like, and F is hate. F is hate. Okay, yeah. F is b below. I did not like. Like fuck this movie. Uh, is F. Yeah. Okay. I'll be interested to see if any of these rank on that for either one of us. But um, I, I, I mean, I'm interested too. Yeah. All right. So let's go in. Should we go in chronological order? Because I I. That's how the retrospective was. It was. It started off. The first one that I saw was Mean Streets, which That's actually may not be exactly chronological, but that was the first one of the retrospective that I saw. So, it, Ryan, what do you think about Mean Streets? Well, and and sorry, just one more thing to clear up: Are we not going to do the ones that you didn't see? Like, because there's who's that knocking at my door before Mean Streets? Yeah, so that's why I said I don't know if it was actually chronological because I did see who's that knocking on my door, but I saw it after Mean Streets. So maybe the retrospective wasn't chronological. I was actually just going by my memory of what order I saw these films in. Oh, it's going to be a little okay. bit messy. We'll get to all of them. Let's just kind of let's spray and pray. Let's just do it messy. Sure, let's spray and pay, play, whatever. Uh, so Mean Streets. You're, you're yeah. asking me about Mean Streets. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I saw this. Uh, I saw this in L.A. Um, in my garage, and I really fucking liked it. Um, it was inspiring because you know it's obviously one of his earlier movies that kind of. I, would you call it his real first breakout? I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I wasn't around in the 70s. I know I mean, Who's That Knocking Out yeah. My Door was obviously earlier, and that kind of you know got him uh, another movie and interest and buzz. But I think that Mean Streets was a hit. It, it definitely, I think, made Robert De Niro a, 
uh, was his first big breakout role, I think. Um, and then that led to his other stuff. Anyway, uh, Mean Streets really fucking liked it. I'm going to give it, I think, I think I'm going to give it a B on this list, right? Okay. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's, it's still an early film. You can kind of see that it's like, uh, um, his, you know, he's just starting, but he's still obviously got a lot of different cool, he, he's a, he's a, he's a vibe filmmaker, you know, he's making, uh, it's gritty or whatever the fuck most people call a lot of his movies, but you can kind of tell that style and aesthetic at the beginning of his career with Mean Streets and Robert De Niro's fucking awesome in it. Same with how I tell, but Robert De Niro kind of carries the whole movie, just his whole crazy, whatever you want to call it, uh, loose cannon performance he gives as that character is awesome. And so to me, the mo he is the movie. It gets a V for me. And I think that you are going to like it probably even more than me. Maybe, maybe you'd put it in a, yeah. So one thing I'll say about seeing Scorsese movies in a movie theater and this overall experience in general is that, um, you know, like Mean Streets is Scorsese's, I think it's his first really, really good New York film. I mean, who's yeah. that knocking on my door is a New York film. But I think when you're watching these movies in a theater, you kind of appreciate the way that he's able to recreate the feeling of being in a city, especially with the sound. And I think in, in Mean Streets, the sound is really interesting because there are so many scenes where you just kind of have these lingering wide shots with two characters talking and you hear some kind of like a Puerto Rican party in the background, like this kind of this this festival of and then you hear this Puerto, Re Puerto Rican music in the background. And it's almost at the same level as the conversation. And there's a lot of things like that in the movie that I think really the theater experience is really primed for. So my, I, I've seen this movie twice. I saw it once in high school or no, sorry, late college. And I didn't really like it that much. I think I was expecting something a little bit more like Goodfellas. I was, I was yeah. expecting something a little bit funnier. I was expecting more something that polished. was like, yeah, more polished. I was expecting like a really fun rise and fall story, uh, like a lot of energy. And this wasn't that. And so I, I, I kind of went into the movie thinking, huh, I wonder if I'm going to like this. But I didn't remember appreciating De Niro's performance as much as I did this time. And yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. De Niro is, uh, it's actually one of my, maybe it was just because I wasn't expecting it, but it was one of my favorite De Niro performances from the entire retrospective. He is so good. He's so good. He's so hateable. He's such a freaking scumbag, yeah. but it's also, he's, uh, there's like a certain, yeah, I mean, it's funny when people, it's almost like his most Joker-like character when people talk about the, the Todd Phillips Joker movie with, uh, you know, obviously mm. King of Comedy and Taxi Driver. They don't talk about the little bubble of chaos that is his character in Mean Streets, or at least I hadn't thought about it previously. So this was a, this one was awesome for me. So I, I, I'm going to give it an A. Do like you, I you, said, like I yeah. thought you would. So yeah, how yeah. are we doing this list? What if me and you disagree? Is this just at the end of the day? Is this tier list? I don't think you, can we split. You do. I guess <laughs> you have the right to appeal. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. I feel like I should. Uh, I feel like we should notate that somehow. How? Yeah, I don't know how uh, we can do that. I was gonna like split. do an A B split, but right now what? this we this could... website does not allow me to do that. Yeah, if we have two lists up here. All right, for everyone keeping track at home, we will be uh, having the visual representation on the screen will be Jared's lit tier list, and you can orally hear mine as we go through it that you can keep up with. So somebody down in the comments. <laughs> okay, how about let us this? Know, let us know what Ryan's tier list was. Okay, since it's Scorsese and we agree that he's a master, we will err on the side of positive if, if it's not. So if you give it an, if I give it an A and you give it a C, then we can split that in the middle and make it a B. But if it's an A, B where we can't split it, we always err on the side of the positive one. So this is a grand compromise tier list. This is not necessarily yours or mine. This is our combined We're doing uh, what we scores. can with what we have. <laughs> okay, I guess that's the best way to do it. So um, All right. we're going with uh, Jared gave it an A, I give it a B. Uh, we can still do the oral thing as we go along. <laughs> but, okay. uh, but overall on this tier, combined tier list, it gets an A. Okay. We're erring on the side of positivity. All right. So moving on to his next early film that I did see, Who's That Knocking on My Door? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you saw this? I always saw it once. I saw it in the uh, – I rented it from the library at UT Austin. 
And I watched that in my dorm room my freshman year because uh, we, we were talking about it in film school and stuff. And um, it's definitely – it feels like to me an even more unpolished first-time filmmaker amateur version of Mean Streets. Um, mean Streets definitely has more of an edge, more of a bite, more grit, however you want to call it. Who's that knocking my door? I, I do enjoy the film. I, I really like – um, I really like all the pop songs, which if I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's why we were talking about the movie in film school is because that was kind of a novel thing at the time was that Martin Scorsese was one of the first people to put just normal pop songs, uh, in his movies as opposed to a score or anything like that. And which obviously still goes to this day. Um, uh, anyway, so I think that that, that was cool. Mar uh, Harvey Keitel's young, super young in it. And he's, it's fun to watch, but overall, um, if I give Mean Streets a B, I think I got to give uh, Who's That Knocking at My Door a C. Not it's not it's not that I don't like it. I would just say it's so so for especially for him, and um, so I'm going to give a C. And I think that you are probably going to agree with me. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, okay. I'll Good. say that. Yeah, the interesting thing is you're totally right with the pop songs. The soundtrack is great. The songs that they do yeah. choose are amazing. But it's also, I think, what was also interesting is that there are scenes like there's a two to three minute long scene where Harvey Keitel is talking about John Wayne movies to his love interest, and uh -huh. that's another thing that I think was not common at the time was characters just talking about movies in a movie. Uh, as a point of conversation. That's a good point. Yeah, I think Scor or Tarantino has brought that up in interviews too, or where I think he was inspired by that film and yeah, referencing other films. This movie felt to me, I know that when Scorsese was coming up as a young filmmaker, his idol was John Cassavetes. And this to me feels like the biggest wannabe Cassavetes movie. Like it doesn't feel like he was really comfortable in his own skin, really had his own voice yet. And so uh, you know, like there's that, I don't know if you remember, there's a, the sex scene that's like in the middle of the movie where they play the entirety of The Doors, The End, which is one of my favorite songs. So it was just cool to be in a theater and hear that on really great speakers. Wait, they play the, the entirety of The End in Who's That Knocking at My Door? By the do yeah. Really? It, I don't it's remember It's like there's a, there's a part where Harvey Keitel has a flashback to, I think it was just some woman that he had sex with. I don't know if it was his first time having a sexual encounter with someone, but yeah, they play the entirety of The Doors, The End. And what the fuck? I, again, I don't know. It, it's That's like a 11 minute song. So it, it was not my favorite thing. I'm going to agree a C. I honestly found myself being kind of bored. Really? Yeah. I kind of forgot that it came out in 67. Uh, to me, this was uh, felt earlier than that, but all right, cool. All right, so now we're going to be going like, a, oh, I think the next one that I saw was Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Okay. What do you think of um, that one? So that one, I uh, I definitely, I th I'll just go ahead and get my grade. I think I'm going to give it a C. I think it's 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 got cool stuff. It's so so. It's def obviously definitely different for Scorsese. You know, it's essentially a melodrama movie that I feel like is not really in his filmography that much. And I mean, Chris Christopherson's good in it. It's got also got good music. Um, who's the woman? Is it Ellen Bernstein? Ellen Bernstein, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's awesome in it. And th there's a there's a couple like famous scenes that I do like, like them fighting and stuff but overall it's so so you know like and i and i assume you're gonna say it's so so you might have liked it a little more on this viewing and stuff but i assume you're gonna say it's it's good but not great yeah i guess just to to simplify my answer is that i i didn't find myself to be bored but i would agree that it's not on the same level as mean streets i think that not only is ellen burson and chris christopherson good but the kid the oh, kid yeah. who plays her son is really good and very yeah. funny. The movie is certainly more fun than Who's That Knocking on My Door. I, I quite enjoyed this one. It was actually the first time I had ever seen it, and I got to see it in a theater for the first time. Um, yeah, you're right. It, it doesn't really feel like any other Scorsese movie because it is more of, I guess, uh, like soap opery melodrama is what you might call it. I guess maybe The Age of Innocence is kind of in yeah, that same vein. Bit. But uh, overall, I would say I was glad that I saw it and I liked it. So for me, it would be a B. Do you It'd want to appeal? 
Um, I don't feel that strongly. I, I honestly was thinking waffling between B and C. It's just that to me, I'm like thinking ahead and going, all right, I know how many awesome movies are going to be in A and S and B even. So I, I, to me, it's a step down. It's in his, it's in his lowest tier, not in, in, by in Scorsese's lowest tier would be a pretty high tier for anyone else, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, I hear you. Yeah. B's fine. So but I for think, the people keeping track at home, I would have put it in a C if I was left my own devices. Okay, okay. All right, so the next one that I remember seeing is Raging Bull. When was the last time you saw that? I uh, saw that in college. I um, uh, There are a few movies. That, unfortunately, I, I, I really love that movie. I, I won't go get my full review yet, but but I, I started Raging Bull. It must have been four or five times before I actually finished it. And that's just my own uh, non-attention span um, at the time. But actually, uh, you know, I, I'm giving my three first. You know, on, on the first three, you said uh, I want to hear your full review before we before my full review. Yeah, let's, raging, let's switch it up. Raging Bull is an interesting one. It certainly was not my favorite. There's a certain brand of Scorsese movie where it's about a obviously very flawed individual. But I find myself while watching it very alienated from them because I find there's almost nothing to admire about the character. Not even that there's something, nothing to admire, but there's just nothing for me to even glom onto, to, to, to attach me to. Like I always bring up the example of like in a clockwork orange, like Alex has style, you know, and uh, that makes the audience like him. Whereas when I'm watching raging bull, this guy, he's just so paranoid and just so sick I just, it's just pathetic more than anything. It's pathetic and it's sad. And I'm watching this and of course, Robert De Niro is amazing. Um, the boxing scenes, some of those shots uh, during in the boxing matches are incredible. Joe Pesci and the scenes between Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro are amazing. The scene at the beginning when De Niro is yelling at his wife about a steak is so funny and it's been memed. My wife actually had only seen that scene on YouTube and then she was like, oh, it's this movie. Um <laughs> So overall, I, I think I'm erring towards also giving it, I know this is, it seems like sacrilege. And if we were just evaluating the movie on, uh, you know, its place in history as a biopic and, you know, the force of De Niro's performance, it would deserve an A or an S. But I got to be honest, I just wasn't enjoying it very much. I would probably give it a B. What do you think? Well, what do you think I'm going to give it? Well, it seems like you haven't seen it in a while. Um, I would probably say that you're going to agree with me because if you tried to watch it five times and didn't get through it, you probably have a similar <laughs> opinion. Um, by the time I ended up watching it, I re really did. I, I really do like the movie a whole lot. Like, uh, there's things about it. A, but 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 you said a lot of what I think. Um, like it has. I, I I the things that I remember about the movie are the awesome boxing scenes. But then, obviously, that's like kind of not the. Uh, that's a smaller part of the movie than just his character, you know, like you're saying, being paranoid, being an asshole for the rest of it. It's I would say it's definitely too long. Martin Scorsese has a you know, well, most of his movies are 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 very long, obviously, but but he's usually great about them not feeling too long. I feel like, and to me, Raging Bull felt a little too long. And yeah, by the end of it, I remember kind of thinking like, God, yeah, I, I think you said it really well. Sad and pathetic is the, is this character. I was into it though. Like I, I can't think of many movies that actually do that, that are about such an anti-hero about someone who you, there's nothing to root for. And they kind of, at the very end of the movie, you know, he has nothing or he, he has no one in his life, but himself and it is just kind of this sad portrait of a character, character study thing. And I like that. I do agree with you, though. I do think I'm going to end up giving it a B. <laughs> also, with all, all that being yeah. said, I think that it, 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 there's, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth for some of it. It's not a perfect film. I do think at this point, it's been like reevaluated over the years. And everyone thinks it's just like, you know, maybe one of his best. Didn't it get the Palme d'Or? I don't even remember. But uh, I don't know. But... Either way, I think that it's kind of a little overrated at this point. It was probably awesome for the time, but uh, it's it's fine, but not a classic now, in my opinion. Well, I don't know if it's classic, but it might be still a classic, but I don't know if it's 
masterpiece level. I think it is a classic, and I and I look at this list, and I'm already like, oh my god, I, I deserve to be shit on for, <laughs> you know, saying Raging Bull is a B movie. Of course, it, that's not exactly what this list means. B means good. Remember, B is it means still it, yeah, solid. It, it means good, but it means I think even though we said we weren't necessarily going to be grading this on a curve, I still think good Scorsese movie means different than like, I just saw the new Ninja Turtles movie and it was good, but it doesn't deserve to be next to Raging Bull. Right. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like at the one hand, I'm, I'm like, okay, most of the other characters, like with Jordan Belfort from the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. He's not really a, 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 a role model but there's something about him that reflects something about our culture or our times. There's something interesting about the tragedy. I think that even with Taxi Driver, you can make an argument about, you know, post-Vietnam PTSD, something like that. With Raging Bull, it just kind of seems like the guy's just a complete douchebag, which, again, like we don't need to be, uh, not every movie has to be a hagiography of some character who's morally upstanding. But I think... Yeah, it was just, I, it was an interesting, it was an viewing experience where I was like, what am I supposed to be feeling right now? Other than, God, this guy, what a chode. Uh, yeah, well, I, it's worth noting, though, that this is our first movie we've gotten to that is essentially based on a true story. You know, this is a real guy that existed. And so I can see Scorsese being like, all right, you know, I really want to bring you in this guy's head and, you know, uh, do a character study on him. Yeah, and, he did, and he did it. And he did it, and it was, was really famous. effective. Yeah, it was very effective. And, and he but... nailed it. I just don't know. And, and that deserves praise. I just don't know how much I enjoyed being put in his head. I get it. No, totally. But but also, I feel like at the time when this movie came out, that what Jake Lamada is that his name? Yeah. Uh, he probably meant something to people. I mean, it's like, oh, I want to go see the movie about this boxer. You know, now if you watch this movie, Raging Bull is just a guy, and oh, you, you, no one knows who Jake Lovato is. Basically, I'm just yeah contextualizing it for modern audiences. That is true. All right, so the next one I remember watching is, I believe, it was The King of Comedy. Okay. You want me to go first? Um, yeah, go for it. So this to me is the, is the perfect, uh, opposite of Raging Bull because Rupert Pupkin is endearing. Yes. He's a little bit mentally ill. He's got his problems. There's certain things that he does that are abhorrent, just like, I mean, in a different, different way, but abhorrent, just like Jake LaMotta and Raging Bull. But there is something about Rupert Pupkin that we love and we admire, and that is that he's an idealist. He really loves show business, and he's an op- he's an optimist. He really uh, will you know, go to perhaps even obscene ends to follow his dream. And I think that, you know, that's what part of what makes the movie so profound is that it does function as that reflection on our culture. And probably I'm not being fair to Raging Bull. I think it probably also does that, but it's probably a time... Uh, that has elements about the elements that I don't quite understand because I'm, I'm not of that generation. Mm-hmm. But King of Comedy was the one. First of all, I think the movie's very funny. Uh, some of those yeah. scenes are, are great. Jerry Lewis is great. Uh, again, amazing De Niro performance. I love this movie. I've seen it probably like four or five times. And I actually brought some friends from work to see it because, you know, it, it's easy to sell people who aren't really into movies by saying, hey, you know, the movie Joker, everyone's seen that, right? Well, this is the movie it's based off of. You got to come see it in the theater. And and that yeah. got them to come in. So I, wa- I want to give this one an A. Okay. All right. What do you think I'm going to give it? I think that you are going to agree. Well, Jared, I'm going to one-up you here. I'm going to go a step further and say this is our first S-tier, Ooh. personally. And th- and that's and I and I don't expect everyone to watch this movie and, you know, like movies will get too soon where I'm like, okay, if you don't think this is an S, then fuck you. It's like I, I, I think A is perfectly fair. This movie just totally hit me at the right time when I saw it. I saw it in college, and I was blown away. I was just watching it because I was so not expecting it. I didn't know that Martin Scorsese had really even made a comedy or anything 
unlike all of his other movies that I had seen at the time. And so it was so refreshing just that he had made this. And then also I love how it's filmed. I think that the, all the cool shots of like, and the weird stuff they're doing with audio where, you know, you're inside Rupert's head when he's in his room and he's hearing, you know, he's, he's talking with his mom and you're hearing, you're seeing all, hearing all the applause that's in his head and whatever, all of those cool tricks, uh, that help you relate to the, this fucked up character, I think are awesome. And he's using his whole cinema brain to, to make this cool experience. And the story is awesome. And then Jerry Lewis is amazing in it, you know, and he's basically playing, essentially himself maybe right. uh, or a yeah. version of himself. Like I, I just, and then Sandra Bernhardt is great in it. She's crazy. Like I really enjoyed the whole movie and I, and I thought it was a, a you know, I keep using the word character study, but, or, but this was an awesome character study of a weird person who I think a lot of people can actually relate to. I really, you know, most people at some point in their life have this thing like, Oh, what if I was famous? You know, kind of thing. It's just a, natural human thing uh uh and this guy takes it to the craziest degree ever and it's just this kind of cool it's like a madcap comedy screwball comedy kind of vibe but also with this super dark undertone that has an edge and you know you really you're like there with the characters like jerry lewis you know you're, when he's tied up with sandra bernhardt i don't know it's a hilarious uh situation and martin scorsese pulled off the whole situation. thing Amazingly, so okay. You know I, what, I, dude? You win. Appeal accepted. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> and you know, I I'm glad you brought up the fantasy scenes because, and I don't know if this is the first movie that's done that. Just kind of the seamless cutting between reality and then something that's a fantasy. But there's there's no visual indications that it's a fantasy other than what we're seeing. Obviously, not make not in accordance with what we had previously seen. And you know, the movie. The best movie recommendation that you've given me this year, Sick of Myself. I feel like there are yeah. a couple scenes that are, and by the way, if anyone's watching this, uh, we watched it in my Discord because I, I just love the movie so much. You got to see the Norwegian 2022 movie, Sick of Myself. But anyway, there are scenes from that that seemingly are lifted directly from the King of Comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I can think of the ones that you're even referring to. Yeah. Because it just like cuts to scenes that are shot just like the previous ones but they're obviously a fantasy mm -hmm. totally okay um let's talk about the next one that i saw which i believe uh, some of these uh, were not on the list but i think it was let's go with after hours okay you go first I'll, on this one. yeah I'll, I'll go first so i watched this uh also in my garage one after i'd left uh ut and i Gotta say, I don't love this movie. Like, um, it's might be one of it's definitely my bottom couple movies. But it's I can it's one of those where you can like see maybe what he was going after or what it was. You know, it's for anyone who hasn't watched it. It's just kind of like this guy going through New York, right, in, uh, in yeah. the middle of the night, and all this cr b bizarre shit happens to him. It's kind of like Quick Change, but way less comedic. If you've ever seen that movie with Bill Murray. Um, have you ever I seen have Quick not. Change, Jared? No. Dude, Quick Change is fucking classic. Anyone watch? Uh, everyone go watch Quick Change. But um, yeah, it's just kind of it, it's like a style exercise, you know. He's go or a vibe exercise where he's just kind of going for this gritty DIY uh, underground, like what comes out at night in New York situation. Um, and it doesn't really work for me. I think it kind of is slow. It's not that accessible for modern audiences i don't uh it's fine it's fine I, i'd probably give it a c there's things i like about it but uh it's whatever yeah my wife really liked this one and the idea of it being a kind of like the 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 movie that i think is most similar to this that's a bit newer is the Takashi Miike movie gozu because it's also about one night walk going through i think it's tokyo just in, in meeting all these crazy weird characters and all these paranoid strange things happen and there's also just well Gozu's much weirder in some ways but yeah this movie I agree uh, wasn't as funny as the King of Comedy there were some funny parts uh, but yeah it was cool seeing Cheech and Chong in the movie I completely forgot that they were in it and it definitely is a strange it's an outlier in his in his work and I yeah. found myself also getting a little bit bored and I felt like for a movie that was meant to kind of cast New York in this mythological light, I feel like it wasn't as effective as I was perhaps hoping it to be. Still a good movie, 
but mm. I think it deserves to be a step below Raging Bull, so I would also give it a C. Okay, cool. We agree. And I would have guessed you would have agreed with me, by the way. I think yeah. you would have given it a C. Although when I, when I what was going into the movie, I was thinking to myself, oh, yeah, I remember really liking this movie. I'm going to really like it. And I think I was a bit disappointed based on – because I think I'd seen it for the first time in high school. Uh, uh, but anyway. All right. So um, let's talk about the next one. I believe the next one that I saw was The Last Temptation of Christ. Not The Color of Money? That's the next one in his... his so The Color of Money, they actually did not play. And I think the reason is because the previous summer they did a Tom Cruise retrospective and it was <laughs> part of that. But I didn't see it last summer either. So I haven't seen The Color of Money since college. So I, I, I don't really remember it very much. Oh, so is that not even on your list of the? Oh, oh, no, it's not, I see it there. It's not part of the fourteen. I mean, it's it's there. Uh, it's okay. here on the list. Uh, I, I would. Pref- Let's talk about the ones that I've seen recently, sure, and then sure, we can sure, kind sure. of go through the ones that I didn't see or that we're not okay. playing. So, Last Temptation of Christ, huh? Do you want to go yeah. first, or, or should I? Yeah. So, I this is the second time I've seen it. The first time I saw it, I was probably in my early twenties after like early moving into LA in my really crappy studio apartment. Uh, that your car got broken into uh, in mm-hmm. front of one time. Uh, and I liked it then. And I think seeing this movie in a theater where so much, of, first of all, Willem Dafoe is amazing. And then a lot of it is also just, uh, I, it's, it's certainly not a New York movie, but he really does a great <laughs> job of like the music and just kind of bringing you into these biblical times. I really liked it. I mean, it is long, but... Uh, I don't know. You you kind of do get the energy of. I, I guess I'm trying to say like the cult like energy of Willem Dafoe bringing people into being his followers. I felt you really got the energy, and I really liked the movie. The movie's beautifully shot. The music is amazing. I I had a great time. I really really liked it. I I, I I'm gonna I want to give it an A. And what do you think I'm gonna give it? I don't know. I mean, I imagine, I think I remember you telling me that when you were a kid and this movie was coming out, it was super, if I'm remembering correctly, it was super controversial um, in your community. And then I think you said that you snuck, <laughs> you you saw it secretly and you were just like, what the fuck? That was boring. Um, uh, well, you might be thinking of a different movie for that because I, I would sneak a whole lot, but I, I didn't see that movie until I believe college. Okay. Um, but, and, and it, you know, it came out when I was two, but I do remember, okay. uh, when I was growing up, um, my mom talking about the movie. Cause you know, there's not that many, any, any Catholic or Christian or Jesus related, uh, movie at all. My mom would be super into trying to get, you know, all of us to go watch it. But then I remember her, uh, talking about this movie specifically about like just how, blasphemous and terrible it was supposed to be i mean she had never seen it but of course she just heard all the stories and stuff because it was at the time a big deal you know the culture in itself was more whatever christian oriented conservative a little bit traditional however you want to call it and this was kind of flying spitting in the face of that which is interesting because you know martin scorsese famously was a is super roman catholic or yeah. was growing up he studied to be a priest and now he calls himself kind of a lapsed catholic but he's super into it you know he's very interested in everything and so like genuinely you can tell and so this was kind of like you know his uh, him wrestling with that, with his faith and stuff, which I think is cool, you know? And, um, and I, I agree with you basically on almost everything you said about the movie. I think it's beautifully shot. I, I, I like movies that are quote unquote, whatever, biblical foot sandal movies or whatever, uh, that are, have an edge. You know, I loved Noah, if you remember, that was my favorite oh, movie I of that year. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And no one else does, but I just like, to me, that's cool because the, the whole, you know, 2,000 years ago, biblical times or whatever, uh, to me, are just so ripe for, obviously, big epic stories that everyone knows. And you can kind of play with them and s- subvert them and stuff. And I think that's cool. And he obviously does that with this. It's way too long. Two hours and 45 minutes. I certainly it's, remember. It's super long. And, but, and I, but I was prepared for it. Yeah. Um, and the ending is amazing. But by the time you get there, I was a little 
tired out, which to be honest is going to make me go from make it that alone makes it, it go from an A to a B for my, for me. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I would say add up all of the things I like about it. And it's a fucking solid, good movie, but it's just punishingly long. Uh, it takes too long to get there. And by the end of it, I'm kind of wiped out. So I can't really give it an A for that reason in my mind. Um, I, I, I personally give it a B. Okay. For our well, I think audience. that yeah, the, uh, you probably put it better than I did. I, I think I would just say that compared to other religion movies or mo- movies about Jesus, which com- that feel like propaganda, when compared to this movie where we see of Christ as a flawed guy riddled with doubt, who's mm-hmm. you know may or may not be suffering from you know mental illness, the movie yeah. even perhaps questions. Uh, yeah, I think it's super interesting and super effective. Uh, we can yeah. agree to disagree on the degree of awesomeness. Uh, and, and we, we can't talk about that movie without also bringing up Harvey Keitel's awesome performance as Judas. Yeah. He's awesome. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, all right. So um, the next one I remember seeing is, I believe, Goodfellas. Okay. Well... Do we even need to talk about this? <laughs> I mean, it, it, <laughs> I guess I'll just say that I wasn't, ex- of the movies that are on the list, I wasn't expecting, I was expecting Goodfellas to be my second favorite, but it ended up being my favorite. Um, I think you it's still. It's your number one Scorsese it, or your favorite of the ones you saw recently? It's the favorite of the ones I saw recently and probably my favorite Scorsese because there aren't that many that I didn't see, but yeah, I, it's amazing. It's so funny. All it, it it moves very quickly. It's so much fun. It's got like so much energy. So many iconic scenes. It's great. I mean, what hasn't already been said about how great this movie is? It's better than great, Jared. Great is for A. Oh, excuse this me. It's a masterpiece. S. It's a, a masterpiece. masterpiece. We're just going in there. I I mean I yeah I I would call this like cinematic crack. You know yeah. like. Talk about, you know, yeah, I complain about long movies, but I want more Goodfellas at the end of Goodfellas. I can't, I do not want it to end. You know, it's just, it's awesome what he did with this movie. And he kind of created his own weird little form, like, uh, because, or structure for a movie. Because it's like really just a... It's almost a bunch of vignettes, basically. Would you would you call that? You know, like throughout yeah. it, that paint a picture of a life. You know, and then yeah, at the end, it it it. it with that final chapter or something, it kind of wraps up in a, I don't know, more, I don't even know how, I'm not articulating. Yeah. I mean, it's like its own Scorsese (laughs) subgenre that casino and the Wolf of wall street and all all these movies. I mean, it's still, yeah. I mean, there's a exposition in which he's a kid and then pretty much the rest of the movie is probably spans about like a five to 10 year period, but we never see him when he's old, like in the Irishman, for example. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you do have then, you know, there is that what final 30, 40 minute sequence where it is basically just a, the morning he gets picked up by the cops. Right. It's been yeah. a while since I've seen it, to be honest. Okay. Um, well, I recommend it. It's, it's so well, I've much seen fun. It so many times. I'm sure you've seen, yeah, yeah. I've seen it so many times. I mean, I just, yeah, like I said, I, I, everybody's firing on all cylinders and that, you know, there's that big, awesome one in the middle. That's super famous oh, while yeah. they're going through the crowd. Thelma shoemakers editing is fucking incredible. You know? Uh, yeah. The, the very fact that you can keep people engaged for three hours and then have them wanting more at the end. Uh, it's a feat, you know, and, um, and it's one of the best mob movies ever. Definitely. It was so good. All right. Well, let's move on. The next one I remember seeing is the age of innocence, which this was actually the first time I'd ever seen the movie at all. And I saw Uh it in a theater and I guess I'll just go first on this. one. I think you're going to agree with me on this in that the movie is kind of boring and I don't really get the, I mean, I get the point of it, but it's just, I don't know. It's a New York movie, but it's a very different New York movie. Usually Scorsese movies that are about New York are kind of about like the, I don't know, the celebrating the cultural specificities of like the, the blue collar, oftentimes Italian working class. This is about uh, the romance and 
scandalous gossip culture of the elites in New York in, I guess, Scorsese's father or grandfather's generation. And not that, you know, certain class, certain classes aren't worthy of depiction or sympathy, but I just, it just wasn't fun and it wasn't that interesting to me. I would give it a C. Um, okay. Yeah. What do you think I'm going to give it? I think you're going to agree with me because I know that you don't like any costume dramas. And although this isn't necessarily Barry Lyndon, it's it's a step closer to that. I I would not say that I don't like any costume dramas. You know, well we've had our we've had like. we've had many our heated Barry Lyndon discussions. So well, yeah, well, and even Barry Lyndon, I appreciate and like. It's just you know you uh, you put it on a different pedestal that I think is crazy. Uh, you know, I Amadeus is one of my favorite movies. Wouldn't you call okay. that a costume drama? You Definitely. Know? Yeah, so I mean, it depends, but I agree with this movie. Yeah, I, to be honest, I feel like a little weird even giving it a grade because I gotta be honest, I fell asleep during this. You know, when I, <laughs> the, the one time I saw it, but I think that speaks volumes. I don't think I think this movie kind of sucks from what I've seen, but yeah, like I said, I feel I can't really give it a solid rating. But I would, from what I did see, I I put it in D personally okay like there's there really wasn't anything i liked about it uh other than just cool shots that can you imagine just saying oh yeah there's a scorsese movie starring daniel day lewis and it's not very good (laughs) yeah that's it's what what a world uh all right i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with you even though i don't think you've seen the whole movie but probably this is the one that i enjoyed the least out of uh the whole retrospective all right um so we're going to be skipping some of the, cause I missed three, the three that I missed were Cape fear, which I had actually watched this year just at home. And then I skipped taxi driver and I skipped gangs in New York. So um, we'll, we'll revisit those at the end. But uh, I believe the next one that I saw was casino. And this is the second time I saw it. The first time I saw it was like on a really small screen in somebody else's studio apartment in LA, you know, um, Certainly not the premium viewing experience for Casino. I definitely, I think that you're going to probably like it a little bit more than me, but I think that it's a significant step down from Goodfellas. Uh, One thing is that it's not funny at all, I think. And Joe Pesci is in it and he's good. There's a few funny parts, but like just the, the mix between like serious kind of, uh, I guess drama is the right word and comedy that Goodfellas was able to nail so precisely. I don't really think it's present here. Um, the, some of the shots, especially the shots that really portray the excess and the spectacle of Vegas um, are amazing. And I think that th- that's the biggest merit of the movie. But other than that, I don't think that that the Rothschild character in Casino is nearly as interesting as Henry Hill and Goodfellas. I don't think that uh, uh, Joe Pesci's character is nearly as memorable as his character in Goodfellas. To me, this is just a, uh, another thing is the suits that the suits that De Niro wears in the movie are pretty legendary. But other than that, I think that this movie is just an inferior version of Goodfellas in almost every way. So what do you give it though? So I would give it a B. I would put it uh, really B or, the fuck B B or an A B or an A. I could be convinced if you feel strongly about A. I could be convinced, but overall, like I think people put it on the same level as Goodfellas, and that's what I expected walking in. And I just disagree with that. I think it's not as good as Goodfellas. Well, you make many good points uh, that honestly might have swayed my uh, my overall letter grading because i'm waffling between an a or an s oh interesting (laughs) to be honest and but i agree with you that it is not it is like goodfellas is better so then i'm like all right we'll do it automatically i put it in a or is it just a little bit not as good of an s as as goodfellas because i think it's amazing i think that it's another movie that i don't want to end even though it's three hours i'm and you're right at the humor part which 
definitely makes Goodfellas more fun, enjoyable watch. But I'm into the characters. I think that they're all really compelling. I love Las Vegas and just in general. So I and in the history of it and all that stuff, and I love gambling and casinos and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the whole you know the setting is right for me to be into. Um, so yeah, I agree with you though that it is basically inferior to Goodfellas in every way. But I don't care. It's still fucking awesome. I love the bookend the uh, that is in the movie. You know, like him, the car you blowing the up. The car blowing stuff. up, yeah. I think that's awesome. I think Sharon Stone is badass in it. Um, and so anyway, I I think at the end of the day, you've swayed me a little bit. I think I, I would go ultimately with an A. Um, and all right, yeah. I feel good about A. Yeah. You, you know, another thing with this retrospective that I. I thought would be funny is like we could do a whole nother tier list of just uh domestic argument tier list because seemingly every Scorsese movie has a husband and wife just screaming at each other. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought of that motif. Like, oh yeah, it's in there. I mean, Wolf of Wall Street, Casino, Goodfellas, uh, Mean Streets, King, Raging Bull. King of Comedy if you count his mom. Yeah, or even... Um, the woman who has Jerry Lewis tied up. I, I don't remember her name. You mentioned uh, San, Sandra Bernhardt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. All right. So the next one I remember seeing is, I think, The Aviator. Ooh, and nice. The Aviator, I saw a lot when I was a kid because it came out when I was like in early high school. And I think it was the first time that I remember seeing a Scorsese movie in theaters. And uh, so I think I remember this was... This was back when the DVD market was red hot, and every time a movie came out on DVD, I would beg my mom to bring me to Best Buy so I could buy the the two disc with all the special features, and I just watched the shit out of this movie so many times. But having said that, I probably hadn't seen it in like 15 years, and I didn't remember the movie being I, – I didn't remember it being as much of a like stylistic cousin to Goodfellas and Casino as it is uh, because really? it is – yeah, in the sense that there is this this very energetic rise of this figure. Now it's it's a very steep rise. It's not like someone starting from the bottom and going up, but like the, that that first thirty minutes of him making the uh, what about the movie about um, what is Hell's Angels? Yeah, yeah, is just this. I mean, it's it feels like a scene in Casino where it's just like constant. I mean, the whole movie really, even when they're they're showing off these huge warehouses where there's a hundred people working on planes. But the first thirty minutes when he's making Hell's Angels is basically just thirty minutes of amazing excess that just really shows just how powerful and how badass this character was. And uh, when it comes to Scorsese filmmaking, when he's able to create these. Uh, single shots that move and that have so many working pieces in the background that are all choreographed to uh, create these larger than life figures who have achieved so much. I think that the aviator is up there with the other movies in accomplishing that. And so I, I want to give it uh, at least an A. Uh, what do you think? Well, at least an A. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think I'm going to think? Huh. I don't think we've ever talked about this movie. Um, I, think so I think I think that you're going to at the lowest give it a B. Um, but I think that um, I think that I will have convinced you that it belongs in the A tier. Um, no, you don't have to convince me. I'm gonna I'd give it an A. I really, really, really like the Aviator. Um, you actually just got me interested because because once you said that it was your first Scorsese mo- movie you saw in the theater, I was like, was that mine? But no, mine was Gangs of New York. That was the first one I saw. In the I, I actually saw that too. I I, okay. I I was wrong. All right. Um, well, I, I I would say that my history with this movie is that the first time I saw it, I remember liking it but not loving it and thinking it was too long. Uh, uh, my constant refrain. But now I have I've definitely revisited it over the years and I love it. Like it's so watchable. It's so it, it definitely moves. It's one of his three hour movies that you know, I feel like doesn't feel like three hours, uh, anymore to me, but, uh, but I, and I'm, it's also about things I'm interested in old Hollywood, Howard Hughes, Catherine Hepburn, you know, all that kind of stuff, filmmaking. And yeah, like, like, I don't think I appreciated at the time just how big of a deal Howard, Howard Hughes was 
yeah. to old people, <laughs> you know, like if you ask old, you know, your, my grandma or something, you know, oh, Howard Hughes, he was of you course. Know, such a big deal, you know, and of course then time goes on and, and the movie comes out and we were kids and I'm like, who, this guy's a big deal. Like who gives a fuck? He's just, you know, but now that I know more about him, um, I think the movie's awesome. And, and Leonardo DiCaprio is so good as Howard Hughes, I feel like. And I kind of had never really thought about your comparison of Goodfellas and Casino. I honestly don't really believe, think that. I, 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 I don't know. To, to me, it's way more of a biopic feeling movie that spans many years of a guy's life. That and yeah, maybe parts of it, sections of it, have that kind of vignette vibe that Goodfellas and Casino do, and with the, with the excess and stuff. But other than the excess, I really don't see the comparisons. Um, but I, I, I love biopics, and I love uh, well-made ones, obviously, so this was a good one. Well, you're definitely right that it's a biopic, and, and, and that it's more of a biopic than Goodfellas and Casino, but I think that there are a fair amount of similarities. One, again, like, you know, we talk about that uh, famous steady cam shot in Goodfellas that basically shows us just, like, how ballin' this guy is. And then, uh, same thing with Casino, just how much money they're making, and how much... I mean, it's basically just the same tools to show the incredible success that these figures have achieved, uh, whether illicitly or legally in this case. Um, so I, I think it's my point is just that he was using the same tools, the same paintbrushes, so to say, to uh, that he does in Goodfellas. In okay. I guess that's really my point. Um, side note, uh, uh, this, I'm having a fucking blast, Jared. But I know you got to go to work at some point. We have like about 20 more movies. I don't know if uh, <laughs> your plan for getting through all of them, or if you wanted to bring. All right. Up well, actually, there, there's only um, a couple more that I saw. So I think I saw The Departed, I saw Shutter Island, and I saw The Wolf of Wall Street. So we've only got three more that I saw. Okay. And, so we'll, and then we yeah, can we, kind we of can... blast. We'll blast through the last of them. Okay, that sounds like a plan. All right, so let's uh, – the next one I remember, let's go with The Departed. What did you think? Um, so I uh, – uh, I f f what else is there to say? I fucking love this movie, and I think it's a masterpiece. I'm going to put it in an S personally. Um, uh, I think it's that good, and um, I had not seen Infernal Affairs, the Korean movie that it's based on. Oh, sorry. It's all uh, good. Chinese, Chinese movie. Um, but then at, at the time, I have seen it now. This is way better than that movie, in my opinion. It's They're very similar, obviously. But I I just was so... Uh, what's the word? This one's, his to me, his best story and script. And just... Uh, like like the others, you know, Goodfellas and stuff. It's like, yeah, you love the movie. It's so, like I said, cinematic crack. But it's almost like the the, the the and the story is great. But the story to me is secondary to almost like just all the cinema ness happening, just how it's made, how it all comes together. Whereas this is such a pulpy, awesome cop story, cop and crime story that left. I was on the edge of my seat, and there was just a couple moments where my jaw was on the floor. You know, like specifically when Matt Damon shoots that guy in the elevator, or when Leonardo DiCaprio gets capped in that same elevator scene. Like that whole sequence in the end and stuff, and, and the very end with Mark Wahlberg. I, like every there's so many times in this movie, I was just like, oh, holy fuck. And it's so violent in a good way. Like it, like the violent hits so hard, and it's yeah, it's hardcore in a, in a in a fun cinematic way. So yeah, I just think that there, I have nothing but good things to say about this movie. He he had an assignment, which is which is you know make a, a copy of an American version of this Hong Kong movie, and he fucking nailed it. And kudos to that the screenwriter too. I forget his name, but he's made other good stuff too. Uh, yeah. Thomas. Montgomery or something Moy uh, Moynihan uh, yeah anyway. something Moynihan I'll agree I think we I was gonna thinking more on the A but I think we'll err on the side of positivity here and we'll go with S I think that first of all uh Jack Nicholson his last great performance and he's so good in this movie and it just made me think like why weren't there more Scorsese movies with Jack in it I made oh, me you, miss you say you think that was Jack Nicholson's last good performance last great performance oh I you have to look at his shit but yeah okay continue and yeah it's definitely better than infernal affairs it's also about an hour longer than infernal affairs 
uh, but which it's, not it is shouldn't necessarily count for it. Like, no, I, I could, but it's 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 almost a different genre. This is kind of a I don't want to say it's not a noir film. Maybe it is. Uh, it's it's like an action drama, a thriller. Whereas Infernal Affairs is more or less just an action movie. It's just like a cop action movie. It doesn't have that kind of like elevated Oscar pedigree drama element. And there's all so many good performances here. I mean, Alec Baldwin is great and Matt Damon is great and DiCaprio is great. And I already mentioned Jack Nicholson, but also um, Marky Mark is great. Uh, it was such a good, it was such a good viewing. I had seen it many times when I was in college and then I hadn't seen it in like 10 years and it was really awesome to revisit. So no disagreements there. All I, right. uh, I agree with you though, that Jack Nicholson, apparently he's only been in the bucket list and how do we know? And I'm still here since then. So you're right. Okay. Last All right. Shutter Island. I have seen this movie probably three times, uh, and including this last time I saw it in the theater. My wife really, really liked it, and I also quite liked it a lot. You know, the thing is, is that I'm, I'm curious what you think, because when I saw it for the first time, and actually, I think we saw it together for the first time, because the first year that we moved to L.A., it came mm-hmm. out, and I think us and a bunch of our friends went as a big group. And the thing that I was always hung up on is that, spoiler alert, it's one of those movies where it's, oh, the main character's crazy. And, you know, we've already been through a beautiful mind and fight club like almost 10 years later and at that point or identity or whatever. And that trope had just become so tired. And so the fact that that was the reveal just seemed like, God, how out of touch could Sorsese be to be making a movie like this 10 years, almost 10 years after it was the cool thing to do. But now when I rewatch it, I kind of feel like the reveal isn't even what's interesting about the movie. Um, And that, you know, unlike a movie... Uh, like Identity, for example, where seemingly like the whole potency of the movie hinges on that reveal. I don't really think that this movie is in the same vein. And I think that otherwise it's just a really uh, more so than I think any of those other movies that I mentioned. This movie is m- a much more interesting manipulation of sound and image to put us in the mental space of somebody that's ill. Basically, what I'm saying is that I think if you're really paying attention um the movie, if, if you look at this movie and you say to yourself, oh, it's so obvious he was crazy, God, Marty, duh, then you're missing the point. Because I think that Scorsese knew that the audience or expected the audience to be savvy enough to know that they're supposed to know that DiCaprio is crazy, probably by the 30 minute mark. It wasn't supposed to be the rug is ripped out from under you, which I thought he was going for when I first saw it. And I kind of feel like a dunce for thinking that. And so I would give this one an A. Okay. Um, wait, but let's go back to what you just said. Uh, so you don't think that it was supposed to be a big reveal. Uh, then what is the point of the Well, movie? it's, it's information is presented to us and you know, it, you know, it puts the pieces together, but it's not like the sixth sense where in the sixth sense, you know, if the movie succeeds, then you haven't even considered that he could be, spoilers, that he could be dead until the reveal at the end. But with this movie, first of all, DiCaprio, you know, at like roughly the 30 minute mark, his clothes get wet. He gets put in these white scrubs. So he looks like another patient. Um, There's the indication that, you know, oh, we already know that he's been in war. There's all these flashbacks, all these crazy things that he's experienced. Uh, There's all these things happening in terms of the audio where you're seeing it rain, like just tons of raindrops hitting these puddles, but you only hear like little drip, drip. There's basically like 70 times more drips actually happening on screen than what we're hearing. Um, You see that the storms that they go through are almost too intense to be believable and the sound doesn't match them. I guess what I'm saying is that the movie, in my opinion, after this most recent screen, screening is not meant to be a kind of gotcha movie like for example the sixth sense i think it's supposed to provide you information at the end to make to understand entirely what's happening but i don't think the whole movie hinges on a reveal um or at least less so um and i think that the movie is a more interesting example of showing insanity through cinematic techniques yeah, I, I totally didn't really buy that or like that, um, if that's what he's going for. You know, um, to me, it just kind of felt like a very empty, shallow genre exercise 
with a shitty twist, you know, like mm. you kind of just said. Like I, I get kind of, I, I, I also, the first time I saw the movie, I kind of, I was into the beginning and the setup and everything. And then, yeah, like it definitely lost me in the middle and especially towards the end, you know, when Ben Kingsley is, has his, his dry erase board or whatever and is showing you exactly how the, the plot of the movie was going on the, the chalkboard. Like I, I just was like so over it at that point. And then I have watched it again and I do kind of like some of the cinematic stuff, uh, uh, you know, that's visualizing being insane, but I really also think it's kind of lame. Like, um, and also just l like you said, the, the, that whole subgenre of, of your main character is a little crazy. And so we're kind of using all these visual techniques and sound and stuff to put you in their mindset. It's like that only goes so far for me. It, it can't. That can't be all it is. You know, it, like if there's like it's all amazing in Fight Club. It's amazing in other movies. Uh, but but for here, I felt like uh, like I said, shallow genre manipulation. And I really kind of don't like this movie. I, I I but I also like stuff about it, so I'm gonna give it a C overall. Okay, so let, I just want to say one more thing about the shallowness of it, and it's similar to, you know, when we're kids and we're watching The Aviator and we see uh, Howard Howard Hughes just doesn't really mean anything to us, so, uh, you know, perhaps we have no awareness of him as a historical figure before going into the movie, so there's not that weight into it, and I felt very similar to you that it was just kind of a, a shallow genre exercise, but then watching it this most recent time, especially with an emphasis on all of, you know, the fact that DiCaprio's character has all these horrific World War II flashbacks, and it made me realize that I think that Scorsese had so much, I think the, I would guess that the reason that he chose this project is that, you know, we had this whole generation of men who just experienced the most horrific thing that, um, you know, certainly, uh, that are uh, something more horrific that our generation could imagine. And they come home and there is, uh, the ability to scientifically treat these maladies is in its infancy. And, um, you know, nobody really knows what to do to treat these people. And there are people like Ben Kingsley's character who plays the, um, plays the doctor who are these trailblazers in trying to think of more humane ways to treat these people. But ultimately, you know, it's still that the science was not nearly sophisticated enough to deal with the horrible trauma that these people had experienced in this war. And there's just a whole lost generation of men and women who, uh, are su we're suffering because of this. And I think that that's what I really appreciated this time. It didn't seem just like, you know, a, a thriller, a psychological thriller. It was about, um, it was about that generation and the plight of that generation who went to war. And so okay. I think that's what elevated it a bit for me. But if you're going C and I was going A, let's split the difference and do B. I guess I was really going between D and C, but, uh, but I guess we could elevate it. Audio right. listeners, people at home, I would have given it a C. Okay. All right. So I think that the last one that I saw was The Wolf of Wall Street. and uh, Just put it up there, Jared. Yeah, put Just it up. fucking yes. do it's it. It's so fun. Fucking it's so funny. It. Just so amazing. Um, w was Wolf of Wall Street it. one of our first three Show Me the Meaning episodes, or was that later? I, I just no, know I me and you have had so many conversations about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first three were Drive, Boss Baby, and Mother. Oh yeah, all right. Um, yeah, what, what else? What what else would you like to say about Wolf of Wall Street? I've seen it so many times. It was so much fun. My wife had never seen it, and for the first like forty five minutes, she was just cracking up. It's so funny. Uh, Jonah Hill is amazing. DiCaprio is amazing. Um, it's full of so much energy. It doesn't feel like three hours long. And I think that, um, you know, I mentioned that there are some movies that probably speak to the, the culture or the ideology of a generation that I probably can't tap into not being of that generation. Perhaps Raging Bull is one of those movies I suspect it is. But this one is a movie that speaks that, that I just 100% understand. Like, I, I feel like when I'm watching this movie, I feel like I'm watching a mirror. I mean, the last shot of the movie is basically saying to us, this is a mirror of our society today. And I think that's just really the mark of a true master, that uh, that across multiple decades, you can just make something that mirrors 
the the times that you're living in. I don't think really almost anyone else can do that. I can't think of another another filmmaker who can do that as consistently across as much time as Scorsese, and it's incredible. It's incredible. I, I definitely, you know, this movie came out on Christmas Day, if I remember correctly, whatever year that was. And I went with basically my whole family except my mom. She didn't want to go see an R-rated movie on Christmas, <laughs> and uh, and I just, yeah, we were all just sitting there being like, God, I'm so glad mom's not here. But um, uh, as this is unfolding, I definitely did not, you know, as we've kind of said before, this ha- this is in his little uh, subgenre of like Goodfellas and Casino, where it's just like nonstop three hours vignettes, but like you're just kind of and a rise rise and fall. Rise and fall, but told in, you know, th- there's very few, like, just very long scenes, re- right? You know, it's just, it, it moves with, at such a pace. And I, I, I did not know that that's how it was going to be like when it first started. So I was sitting there for the first 30 minutes. You know, you said your girlfriend was like, uh, I mean, your wife was laughing and stuff. Like, I remember kind of being a little confused the first time I saw it. I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? Like, it's just <laughs> nonstop, you know, they're partying. It's like, what am I supposed to get from this? I don't know any of these characters, really. You know, I feel like, uh, but or am I supposed to? Am I missing something? And I was missing something. I, I, but but by an hour, an hour and a half in, once you kind of get the the style of the movie, it's amazing. And now when I watch it from the beginning and you know how it is, like, I, I yeah, I, I, I fucking love every second of it. But, uh, yeah, this movie's incredible. It's amazing. So, all right. Well, dude, this was my summer. This was the summer of Scorsese for me. So this is Hell officially yeah. all the 14 that I saw in the theater this summer. And it was so awesome. Um, so we can rapid fire through some of the other ones. Um, yeah, let's so, just but, start. But, but, but some of my, it's like bringing out the dead. I've just never seen. At You've all. never seen that? Never seen dude, it. Dude, you got it. You gotta, it's really good. Um, okay. What would so you give it? I would put it. I'd put it in honestly, probably uh, B or A, A or B. You know. Um, all right, all right. So make a call, brother. Make a call. Okay, let's go B. Let's go B. B. All right. Boxcar Bertha. I saw this in high school. Pretty much didn't like it. This is my least favorite Scorsese movie. I haven't seen it in like fifteen to twenty years. I, 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 it's. I like it fine. I, I personally give it a C. It's definitely so so. It's not like uh, nothing. I don't not like it. It's just kind of a whatever. Right. We're going D. And the reason being, because I remember hearing that John Casavetes, who was his idol, saw the movie and said to, said to Scorsese, is this the kind of movie you want to make? And then that apparently <laughs> that put a fire under Scorsese's ass. And uh, All right, Cape Fear. I saw this movie. I've only seen it once. I saw it for the first time at home earlier this year before I knew there was going to be a Scorsese retrospective. And I thought it was awesome. Counselor, I fucking love it. I would I give it, an a, it. I, at least an A for me. That's exactly where I was going to put it. I, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a, whatever you want to, a remake or whatever. I, I don't think it is just masterpiece, masterpiece status, but it is a fun ride, you know, and thrilling. It's great. All right. Color of Money, I've only seen once. I don't really remember it that well to feel like I can give it a confidence score. What about you? I love it. It's it's kind of a comfort movie for me. I, I like I can put that on and and watch the whole thing at any time. Is it it's, because it's a Memphis movie? Is that right? Is it? They not? might go to Memphis in it, that, but oh, I mean, okay. I, I just like I just like pool shark movies or ga- you know hustler mm-hmm. gambler movies. And this is also kind of a spiritual sequel to the Hustler with Paul Newman. Paul yeah. Newman's you know, uh, playing a similar character as an older guy. It's and the same character. I think it's a like a legitimate sequel. Is it not? You're, you might be right. I don't know if they go into it that much. But yeah, I, yeah, I think you're, you maybe are right, actually. But uh, And I love The Hustler. The Hustler is great. Minnesota yeah. Fats, Paul Newman. Um, but yeah, I, I personally would give Color Money an A. I think it's a great, fun film. Okay, well, I will... I remember liking it, so I will... I will defer to you. All right, Gangs of New York... I don't know, man. I've seen, I remember I saw this movie in theaters and I think it's probably got one of the, from what I remember, best production design maybe of any movie ever. I remember being kind of bored to it. I really don't like the parts where Daniel Day Lewis looks at the camera. I never really understood why that happens. Uh, uh, and I, and I don't love Cameron Diaz in the movie, um, but I haven't seen it in a long time. So I don't really feel that comfortable rating it. Really? See, I, I, I don't really love this movie. There's definitely uh, uh, too long. It, it 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 gets boring in the middle, but to be the I, I'm ultimately going to give it a C because I think it it has like 
amazing production design. The, the opening fight's awesome. The ending fight is awesome. So that that alone makes it to where it's like, all right, I like parts of it. I'd give it a C. Okay. Hugo, I remember I've only seen it once when it came out. I saw it at the Vista in LA. But when I think Didn't about- did I see it with you? I don't know, maybe. I don't really I remember. I, I mean, I remember really liking it, but it just seems like almost a, a, a juvenile installment in the Scorsese. I mean, it's, it's about movies. It's about how much he loves movies. We know that it, it almost, I don't know, it feels like his most kid-friendly movie and there's nothing really wrong with that. Um, but again, I've only seen it once. I, I don't really have strong feelings. Yeah, I saw it once. Unfortunately, this is another Scorsese film I, I fell asleep during, <laughs> and which is crazy because it, wasn't it in 3D? Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't did see it in 3D. but Okay, then then in that case, I don't think we saw it at the same theater because I, I saw it in 3D, um, which is weird to fall asleep during a 3D movie. But yeah, I just couldn't. I didn't love this movie, but I haven't seen it really. So I don't know. C or D for what I've Let's seen. Let's just... Uh... Let's put it in C. Uh, all right, The Irishman. This one did not play, which I was surprised. I've I've seen this movie, I think, one and a half times. It's the same thing like what you said. You know, our grandparents and our parents, everyone in the world knew who Jimmy Hoffa was. Yeah. Uh, same thing with The Aviator. I had no idea who he was. Uh, so, yeah, to, for me, this movie, uh, from the I didn't see it again recently although the first time i did see it i did see it at a theater in the egyptian even though it's a netflix movie and i felt like this movie was just as long as the wolf of wall street or goodfellas maybe even a bit longer but it just wasn't fun it didn't have the fun rise didn't have the excess it was just kind of a guy who yeah i don't know i don't love this movie i would probably give it at the highest a b what do you think yeah i was waffling between c and b to be honest, because uh, it's I, I don't think it's good, so I would not put it in B. I, I I would say C. It's got good stuff. It's I mean, talk about too long. I mean, this is his longest movie, right? It's like almost four hours, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking maybe it's like even three and a half. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fuck that, it, dude. Like C B C. Yeah, C C, C for C, the C. length. Kundan, yeah. I have never seen. You never seen Kundun? Mm-mm. Oh man, you gotta see some Kundun. <laughs> Love me some Kundun, dude. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would put Coon Dune in probably, I mean, I like Coon Dune. I'd give it a B. I don't love it. I also don't, I, 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 I but I like it more than so-so. I don't even like know I, what it's about. I've just straight up never seen it. The Dalai Lama, baby. Okay. It's the what, story I, of what, the, what the is current this Dalai movie? Lama. This is, oh, New York, New York. Okay. The, oh, yeah, J- yeah. the Joker 2 movie. <laughs> Haven't seen it. Have you? Yeah, I saw it. I saw it in college um, when I first was going through every Martin Scorsese movie. Um, it's another, I, I'm a broken record, too long. Um, it's got cool musical uh, set pieces and stuff. And it's not great for damn sure. It, it's a disappointment. Um, so we can k- knock out S and A tier. At the highest it would go is just good. But I don't think it approaches that. I think it, but it's it's not D. I think it's C. I think it's a right. solid C. All right, Silence. I've seen this movie once. I saw it um, at my home uh, early morning. I think I started the movie at like 9 a.m. with a cup of coffee. And I think it was just like the perfect movie to watch at 9 a.m. with a cup of coffee. It's really long. Uh, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. I would give this one uh, at, at least a B. I was going, I was looking straight at the B tier. I don't think it's super solid with the, it doesn't belong with the A's, doesn't belong with the C's, but I think it does belong right up there with a raging bull or something. Um, like it's, it's good. You know, it's, uh, uh, I, I, there's lots of little scenes that I, I, that are memorable to me in that movie. All right. The last one, Taxi Driver, which I did not see at the retrospective. I've, I mean, just to, when I was in high school, I really love this movie, you know, because it was like the ultimate edgelord movie. Uh-huh. And then and then every time I've seen it since then, I've seen it probably three times since then, I've liked it less. Now when I watch it, it kind of just feels like a weird incel fantasy. The thing that kind of uh, <laughs> redeems it is the fact that, oh, yeah, well, it's about, you know, similar to Shutter Island in some ways. It's about, you know, uh, isolated deranged men being haven't been deranged from the Vietnam war. 
I know that everybody loves this movie. I don't love it as much. I would probably want to give it a B, and I think you're going to argue for A or S. Um, no, I'm I'm much more on your side on this, honestly. Like, uh, certainly not S. I could see the argument for A because I do think it's great, and especially when you put into just the context of what it meant at the time and how fucking huge it was. And you know, I think it won the Palme d'Or. Uh, it, you know. Yeah, it's clearly a monumental, like landmark film, and and stuff. I, I but I agree with you. It does not really hold up. It kind of wears on you after a while, and it's just kind of not super fun to watch after a while. Should that really count? You know, I we've talked about this before, but sh- sh- should you count it against it if a movie is not fun to watch more than once? You know, because yeah, like you said, the first time you watch this movie. It, it hits pretty hard, I feel like. You know, when I first saw it, I really liked it. And then, like you're saying, every subsequent viewing, I'm like, you kind of see what he's doing and you're, or you've seen other movies like it. You're like, this isn't as good as everyone makes it out to be. But I don't know. It's, it's a weird calculus with where to put it in our ranking. Um, but I ultimately would end up going just B based on how fun I feel. Yeah, like if I'm being watch. honest, I would also say B. Yeah. All Which right. Well, we did it, man. Dude, yeah, we did. But Martin Scorsese, so excited for his newest movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. I'll be there this day is, one. I will. T- this is actually remarkably more balanced than I thought it was going to be. I know. I thought it was going to be all ARS, but I think ultimately we ended up doing the thing and then we the graded curve. it on a Scorsese curve. I think <laughs> a, it's, unavo- it's unavoidable just because there yeah. is a, a matter of difference in quality even between an amazing filmmaker who only makes amazing movies. Yeah, and I'm glad we didn't – I'm glad there's no fuck this movies – Although that would have been interesting. Yeah, I mean, the closest thing is definitely Age of Innocence or Boxcar Bertha. But again, with both of those movies, there's still a lot to appreciate. If you if you factor it as documentaries, I could see uh, Pretend It's a City, the Franz Leibovitz <laughs> films. Okay, which no, is I like, haven't every seen time, it. And when I watch, I'm like, why do you keep making movies about this woman? I don't. I don't know, um, but that's probably another like like she was a cultural touchstone back in his day, so it means something to him. And she has cameos in some of his movies, like she plays a judge for like thirty seconds in The Wolf of Wall Street. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't notice that. That was my first time noticing that. All right, brother. Well, this was fun. Um, yeah, this was cool. Yeah, love to revisit the workings of a great, and uh, yeah. Appreciate your time, brother. Scorsese for life. Scorsese for life. Marty's still got it. You know, I cannot wait for Killers of the Flower Moon. I mean, I think that that might be my favorite of the year. I, I Not to put too much pressure on it, but just based on the the reviews coming out of it, it looks incredible. So Yeah, I think it's likely because there's nothing that's come out this year that I've been super head over heels for. Honestly, me neither. Well, well uh, I really liked Oppenheimer, but... Uh, Again, I wouldn't say head over heels, but I really, really, really liked it. Uh, All right. But I, I also uh, uh, looked up like every good movie coming out. There's, we still got a lot of good stuff. You know, we got The Killer coming out. We got Killers of the Flower Moon. And uh, at least a small handful of other big filmmakers. Anyway, I feel like you got to go. But Yeah, got to go to work. But uh, hey, man, appreciate it, brother. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out Ryan's channel at Ryan's Shorts, where he's uploading some pretty awesome stuff. And also check him out on Funhouse. Appreciate it, brother. It's always great doing these uh, catch-up sessions, getting a nerd out like old times. Hell yeah. I love it. Let's keep doing more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Take it easy, man. All right, dude. Peace out, everybody. And see Peace. you, Jared. See ya.